think one of the best things that comes out of me doing classic cocktail episodes of the show is figuring out how real history and mixological history intersect in very unexpected ways. Sinking of the RMS Titanic and the Bee's Knees cocktail on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. I'm not bullshitting you either. That is an actual connection that exists here. Hi there, hi there, ho there. My name is Michael. I am a private events bartender currently available for hire in the Kalamazoo Portage area and a home mixologist. And today we're talking about another classic cocktail by the name of the Bee's Knees, which may be one of the silliest names I have ever heard. Now, the history of the Bee's Knees is a little bit convoluted, a little bit all over the place, and nobody's entirely certain who came up with it. Many people would have pointed to David Embury's account of the cocktail in his 1948 book, The Fine Art of Mixing Drinks, wherein he states that it was invented uh, with the combination of lemon juice and honey syrup as a variation on the gin sour to cover up the flavor of poor quality gins during prohibition. That is almost entirely bullshit. David Embury makes no claim to owning the cocktail, but that's where most people come into interface with it during that time. In truth, actually, it comes from 1920s, sometime in the 1920s, and there are two people who are potentially accredited with having invented it. The first of which is a woman named Margaret Brown, who, if you are a student of history, may know as the unsinkable Molly Brown the one who survived the sinking of the Titanic. Molly Brown, uh, Mo Mo Molly Brown, as her nickname is known as, but Margaret Brown was born in, I think, 1886 uh, and is an American philanthropist and socialite who did a lot of really incredible things, actually. There's a lot about her that would make her deserve her own video, but not really my school of history. She survives the sinking of the RMS Titanic, and I think 1912 was when that happened, and then it goes on to move to France uh, to work during World War I as foreign aid for the French people. I, I'm so stunned that this is coming up in the discussion of a cocktail. <laughs> Rumor has it that while she was in France, she stayed at a hotel called the Hotel Ritz Paris, where she invented the cocktail, likely for other socialites or French ambassadors, other countries' ambassadors, just as a portion of being a host as part of what her job was at the time. Now, the other, and personally, I think the more likely of the, of the options for who invented this cocktail is the head bartender of the Hotel Ritz Paris named Frank Meyer, who started there in 1921 and reaffirmed his claim to the cocktail in a recipe book of his own called The Artistry of Mixing Drinks in 1936. And if I'm saying that and you're realizing, wow, the artistry of mixing drinks, the fine art of mixing drinks, is David Embury just stealing shit from other mixology? Yes, yes he is. So either Molly Brown or Frank Meyer invented the cocktail, no one's entirely certain who, and there are claims that both of them could have done it. There are two pieces of information pulled up by a historian named James Brown from 1929, an art, uh, a newspaper article and I think a menu or cocktail recipe book, uh, that both list Molly as being the inventor of the cocktail, but her association with mixology doesn't really make sense for that to have been the case. And while it's entirely possible that Frank Meyer invented the cocktail with Molly Brown or for Molly Brown, it's more likely that he came up with it on his own while working at the Hotel Ritz Paris. So no one knows exactly who invented the bee's knees, but at least it wasn't David Embury, so we can all take pride in our resident alcoholic who we discussed in the Gin Sour video uh, of the Army and Navy, and just they say that he's not responsible for anything good. <laughs> now, while we might not know exactly how a bee's knees came to be, we do know how how to make one, but even that can change from time to time. The Bee's Knees is originally posited as a variation on the traditional gin sour, substituting simple syrup for honey syrup, which is just very simply diluted honey made into a pourable syrup. The thing is though, sometimes that does in fact change. Now this is actually really fascinating because if you know anything about um, old culinary recipes, the combination of lemon and orange appears in a couple of different French, uh, French recipes. Namely, French-style lemonade, which we discussed in our video on the drinks of tasting history after the release of Max Miller's cookbook. Now, the thing that is interesting about the bee's knees is that occasionally some orange juice is added to the cocktail. As it appears on differenceguide.com, their recipe includes a third of an ounce of orange juice, and I will say, I did give it a try. Because the notion of combining lemon and orange appears in other places in French cuisine, and it was very fascinating there. I think it's a really good way to create a natural citrus-style sweetness 
that is not too saccharinely sweet and allows you to use less syrup so that things become more balanced and more full-bodied and more three-dimensional. And I actually disliked the cocktail quite a bit. <laughs> the problem with orange juice in cocktails is that it is both lacking in citric acid and is very high in sugar. Lemons and limes have a lot of citric acid in them. They are sour and tart, respectively. They have so much in there that they are an acid component. Oranges do not have nearly enough citric acid, less even than grapefruits, to accomplish that same task. So if you were to substitute the lemon juice in something like a gin sour for orange juice, you'd end up with something very sweet and very juicy and very unlively, very, very piss poor in quality, frankly. Likewise, the high sugar content of them means that when you are adding other sweeteners, you run the risk of over sweetening and, and even possibly actually over diluting your cocktail by having too much of everything going really the point is it overcomplicates the cocktail so while it is well while it is possible that that is an entirely historically appropriate thing to do to a bee's knees uh, i think it makes it an inferior cocktail so we're going to be skipping that and i'm going to do an optional addition of something different instead just to see how it plays with the other ingredients. Now, finally, there's not much to talk about as far as uh, making a bee's knees. All you will need is some London Dry Style Gin, something with a strong juniper punch, like Beef Eater, Tinkeray, or Bombay Sapphire, some freshly squeezed lemon juice, and one specialty ingredient that you will have to make on your own, some honey syrup. Now, honey syrup, like I said, is a combination of water and honey to make a pourable syrup uh, that will not freeze when making cocktails. The viscosity of honey is so thick and so high that mixing it with cold ingredients before it can fully dissolve will cause it to freeze or solidify and turn into sort of a hard candy texture. You really, really do not want that when you are trying to sip a cocktail that desperately needs the sweetness that honey provides. <laughs> the advantage of making a syrup out of this means that not only is it usable in cocktails, but as a substitute for simple syrup, it adds sort of savory, herbaceous, herbal, floral note underneath all of your other flavors, and is a really good way to add additional complexity that is not too loud and does not rely on adding an additional flavor to your cocktail to kind of change things up. So with our history, uh, some of the variations, and our special, uh, specialty ingredients in mind, let's go ahead and make a bee's knees. So the bee's knees is a shaken cocktail. We're going to grab our cocktail shaker here. We're going to start off with one full ounce of honey syrup. Uh, now, most honey syrups, um, you'll see people suggest are one-to-one -one honey syrups. I have no idea what kind of honey you guys are getting. That is not nearly a strong enough balance. Ideally, you want to go for something that is at least two parts honey to one part water, and I'm using a three parts honey to one part water combination, which brings it pretty close to the strength of a double syrup. That's kind of where you want to go. You want to make that good quality honey. If you can, find some locally sourced uh, honey from a local beekeeper or a local manufacturer of honey, or at the very least go to the store and buy some organic raw honey. It will have the most raw, realistic character and will function correctly when you turn it into a syrup like this. I'm gonna grab a lemon here, split that in twain, and we'll come behind that honey syrup with one ounce of lemon juice. Finally, we need to go ahead and choose a gin, something with strong juniper notes, and ideally some citrus notes actually would be really good. Um, Beef Eater, Tank Array, Bombay Sapphire, all good options. I'm going to use Svetka today. Um, kind of cheap gin, but it is very strong in juniper and citrus specifically, so it is appropriate here. We'll pour out and add two ounces. Now, that is where you would stop the making of a traditional bee's knees, but I'm going to make one very, very small addition to sort of play around with the idea of combining lemon and orange. Rather than reach for uh, orange juice, which is sweet and doesn't have enough citrus to keep things lively, or an orange liqueur, which would be too sweet and kind of pull this in the direction of a daisy, I'm gonna reach for some orange bitters instead. I'm gonna do one dash of that. It's gonna add some nice complexity and go for, you know, kind of adding that orange flavor without needing to adjust our sweetness at all. Uh, meaning that we won't have to worry about over or under doing any of our other ingredients alongside it. We gotta go ahead and shake this, so we're gonna do our one cube whole and one cube crack ethos. As always, for the sake of consistency. We will cap that up, tap that down, and shake for 10 to 12 seconds to combine. A bee's knees is served up in a coupe style glass. I'm gonna grab one there. Gonna grab our cocktail, strain that right on in. To finish this off, we're gonna go ahead and give this a garnish. Now, I've seen that these can be garnished with both uh, lemon or lime peels, uh, and in certain cases, thyme sprigs, which we'll talk about in a little bit here. Um, because I'm using some orange bitters in this one, see how that orange and lemon combo plays together? I'm gonna grab some orange here, take a swath of peel off of that, 
express that over top and then perch that right up on the lip there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the bee's knees. All ready for their station cleaned up, as cleaned up as it can be, because honey syrup is notoriously sticky. We'll go ahead and give our bee's knees a sip. Cheers. Now, that, that is what I am talking about. Oh my God. The balance of ignoring ignoring the orange bitters, which was an addition of my own, the combination and, and the playing between the honey and lemon is one of the best things on the face of the earth. <laughs> it has this sort of um, floral and earthy tone underneath it that you're missing when you use just simple syrup. And the acidity of the, of the lemon is just balancing against that and playing off of it and giving it life and making it, it full and, and, and sort of cutting its richness to keep it from being too sweet. Behind that are those gin botanicals that are just singing nice and loud and, and, and very, very pleasantly uh, behind everything and, and keeping it sort of light and, and bracing and interesting. I wonder how an Aquavit would handle here, something like Norden Aquavit, I think would be pretty, you know, pretty appropriate. And I mean, like I said, outside of the orange bitters, a really, really nice interplay and balance of sweetness and citrus and gin with the additional character that that's, that sweetness component is bringing, just giving it that extra dimension it needs to be, oh, excellent. The addition of that orange bitters is also amazing. <laughs> It reminds me, very, very plainly, of the French style lemonade we made, like I said, in the uh, Tasting History cocktails video. This sort of balance that that's, that's encouraging here, it's taking it away from being too sweet, because you got a full ounce of honey syrup in there, that's a lot of honey syrup. Uh, that full ounce of honey syrup, you know, it's helping moderate that a little bit extra, giving it this nice little extra bitter tinge to it. And that lemon and orange combo, it's just reading like, like lemon orange candy, like lemon orange lemonade, like French style lemonade, without needing to go through the process of juicing a whole bunch of lemons and oranges and without throwing off the balance of the ingredients and making it just kind of dull. It has life is what it has. It has a lot of really nice bounciness to it and is very, still very light and smooth and pleasant and very, very easy sipper. Not to mention this orange, this orange garnish on the rim here is just just delightful. The smell of the smell of orange peel. I think I'm finding out is is really really amazing here. Mm. Yeah, that's a damn fine cocktail. Definitely sweet. If you're gonna use a full ounce of honey syrup, I think my, much like any sour, you could pull that back to three quarters of an ounce and have a more a more balanced, a more tension filled cocktail where the citrus is a bit more sharp and more eye catching and and a little bit more in your face. But uh, even still, as it stands, that is an excellent drink. That is wonderful, oh my God. <laughs> now, uh, I wanted to share with you just a couple of different variations that the Bees Knees has, because it, it has been around for long enough that it does have a few of its own. Now, most of them revolve around um, the idea of playing with gin varietals, actually. You know, every gin is a little bit different. The botanicals in them are um, a little different each time. There is an infused gin by, I think, Bar Hill Gin Company. I think it's, I think it's either thyme or lemon infused in and of itself. So it's like extra lemon on top of, of more lemon. I've also seen a lot of people involve thyme in this. Either you infuse some thyme into your honey syrup uh, while you're cooking it on the stove, um, you know, just heating it up and bringing it together. You throw some thyme in there and then it, it kind of wakes it up, takes that, to the flavor, puts it in there. Sometimes even infusing thyme into gin or using gin with very thyme forward flavors. I mean, apparently that's just a thing people like to do. <laughs> Knowing anything about tea, the way I know how like tea and tea drinks is thyme and honey go together really, really well. They are a very, very good combo, but like, seems like a very interesting addition here. I feel like the sort of citrus candy like nature of this adding thyme to it, not my bag, but go for it if you want. There was only one named variation of the bee's knees I caught wind of called the oldest living Confederate widow. <laughs> and it is a bee's knees that includes both orange bitters uh, and absinthe, actually. Two dashes of absinthe and two dashes of orange bitters, which first of all, is a lot, <laughs> a lot of bitters and a good amount of absinthe. Uh, you're definitely going to detect that, but I feel like it would be a really fascinating cocktail. And I kind of like it, you know? sort of like um, bordering on cloyingly sweet, candy-like, southern kind of drawly welcoming stuff, but bittered by age and racism. 
Yeah, it, it seems like a, it seems like a fascinating a fascinating variation. I might just I don't have a dasher bottle for absinthe, so I mean, a rinse in the glass would be fun. But I don't know. I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Is what I'll do. I'll try it. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the bee's knees. Absolutely phenomenal prohibition era cocktail invented by either Frank Meyer or Molly Brown. That, regardless of who came up with it, is an easy easy cocktail to get behind for just about anybody on the face of this planet. And with that, we come to the ending of our episode today, where we will be reading from Crisp Toasts once again. I'm not throwing another song cover at ya. That was a little weird, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm going to skip through here. We're towards the end of the section on action, and there's a lot of quotes in here, and they're really long and verbose. We're going to switch to the uh, section on adolescence instead. Today's toast goes as such. To adolescence, a period when children refuse to believe that someday they'll be as dumb as their parents. Cheers. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, click that like button down below and subscribe to catch more. I release a new video every single Friday and sometimes on Tuesdays, so if you want to catch those, be sure to click that bell notification to get notified when I make videos. My socials are either on the screen already or appearing on the screen now, depending on how I decided to edit it. And if you want to, you can follow me on all of them. I use Instagram and TikTok the most after YouTube, but really I kind of sort of just live here. So if you want to just hang out with me here on YouTube, that's also totally chill, dude. Yep. Thanks again all for watching. I will see you all in the next episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Please remember to drink responsibly and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Bye-bye.